to you about your oral exams, okay? All right, what we're going to see today is absolutely nothing new, okay? Everything that I am going to tell you is common sense and information that your teachers have already told you. There is no secret formula, there is no magic trick to passing our oral exams. You have to do hard work. The end. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start off with talking about ways that we can prepare for our exams in the weeks leading up to it. All right, I'm going to give you some advice, a few tricks, and hopefully you will take them into account. Secondly, I'm going to give you some suggestions about ways you can reduce your stress on the day of the exam. Okay? Then we're going to arrive at the big moment, the exam itself, and I'm going to give you some advice, some tricks to remember to make the exam a little bit easier. But the bulk of this presentation is going to be focused on the marking criteria. What it is that your examiners are looking for. If you know what they're looking for, you'll be able to prepare better. You will know what to practice. You will know what to put your effort into. Okay? So here we go. That's you guys right there, yeah? Alright, first and foremost, you need to study, guys. You need to put in the hours. You need to learn as many words, expressions, and structures as physically possible. And it's not just a matter of memorizing a list of things in front of you. You need to learn when to use them, what you can use them with, what they collocate with. All right, you need to know everything there is to know about what you have learnt so that you use them at the right place and at the right time. Okay? Second of all, take advantage of all your course material. Now, I know that all of you have student books, but I imagine many of you have workbooks as well. Yes? How many people have actually touched their workbook? <laughs> Well, there you go. You've got a whole book of material that you can use, all right? And your student books also come with CDs, which have readings, which have listenings. Your teachers have given you worksheets, photocopies, all right? Just there, you have a lot of material which can be useful for your exam. So go back over it. Make sure you understand every word and understand the why of every single structure, okay? And finally, Use a variety of courses. Hands up the people who watch television in English. Less than half. That's not good, guys. <laughs> Alright? Watch television in English. It's so easy to do these days. Okay? Watch television in English. Hands up people who are reading in English. Well, that's even worse. Okay? Read books in English. Listen to music in English and sing along. Download podcasts, download audiobooks, read magazines, read newspapers. You need to accumulate as much information as possible so that you'll be better prepared for the day of your exam. Okay? Does anybody here know the meaning of this expression, to know the drill? Yes? When we say know the drill, it means know what is going to happen. Know the procedure. Know the routine. Know what is coming. You are not going to know what the questions in your exam are. You don't know what the topics are. But you can know everything else there is to know about the exam. Starting with the date and the time. Okay? You need to know when you need to be here, where you need to be, and plan your day accordingly. Make sure that you don't find out at the last minute. You don't want to feel rushed because that will stress you and make you more nervous. Alright, so find out when and where and plan around it. Next, does everyone recognise what this is? On the left, on, yes, your left. Yeah? This is the marking criteria. This is what we're going to see today. 
It is on the school website and it is in Spanish. Hands up the people who have read their marking criteria. This sheet of paper will tell you exactly what it is your examiners are looking for. You should read it, you should memorize it, you should know it off by heart, okay? And next to it you have the student guide. Every level at the language school has a student guide. Hands up if you've read the student guide for your level. <laughs> All right, well that's very sad, okay? You need to read the student guide because in it, you have all the content of your course. You have the format of your exam, okay? If you read both of these, you will be much more prepared. You will know what is going to happen in your exam and you will know what the examiners are looking for, okay? So make sure you go online and you read these. Okay. Has anyone ever practiced speaking English in front of a mirror or ever recorded themselves speaking? No? It's a wonderful, wonderful way to practice your speaking and it's for two reasons. First of all, your exam is not just a private conversation. You're giving a presentation, you're putting on a performance and you have an audience. And when we have to speak in front of people, there are lots of things that we should know about ourselves. First of all, do you keep eye contact with your examiners? Are you staring them down the whole time that you are talking to them? Or are you looking down at the piece of paper without even acknowledging that they are there? You need to check and see if you make eye contact and the right amount of eye contact with your examiners. Second of all, do you gesture while you are speaking? Some people make very big, elaborate gestures and some people don't even move their hands. You need to check that you do the right amount of gesturing and you do it in the right place. Okay? Third of all, do you have any ticks? Does everyone know what ticks are? Yes, ticks are things that we do when we're nervous and that obviously will be happening while we're doing our exam. A lot of women play with their hair. Sometimes we scratch ourselves. Sometimes we make noises on the desk and sometimes due to our nervousness, our leg starts moving and it won't stop. Okay? You need to know if you have a tick and if that tick interferes with your performance. You do not want to do anything that will distract the examiner from your speech. Okay? I had a friend at university who used to sway. <laughs> he used to do this all the time when he was giving presentations until we took him aside and we told him, look, we're getting seasick watching you go back and forth. Really, you do need to work on it. And he practiced in front of a mirror and he stopped. Okay? So you need to know what you do when you speak. And finally, do we make any strange sounds while we're speaking? Do we clear our throat <coughs> constantly? <coughs> okay, or are we always making sounds like, mm, well, I think that mm, the problem is, mm, I don't know if, mm. all right? <laughs> you don't want to do that because again, it distracts from your English, it distracts from your speech. So you need to find out whether you make sounds while you are speaking. Now the other reason to practice in front of a mirror is of course to practice your pronunciation. All right? Speech therapists encourage people with speaking impediments to practice the sounds they have trouble with in front of a mirror so that they can see what they do with their mouths. So people who have problems saying S's, saying R's, just do these sounds over and over and over again until they get it right. And the same principle applies for pronunciation. All right, we've arrived at the big day. It is exam day, guys. Yeah? I'm going to give you a few pieces of advice to keep in mind for when this day comes. Number one, get yourselves in the English mindset. What do I mean by this? When you wake up in the morning, put on music in English. When you're driving in the car, listen to something in English. If you have some spare time, read in English. If your exam is after lunch, 
watch television in English with lunch. And when you arrive at the language school, when you're waiting outside the room with your classmates, talk to them in English. Now the reason for this is when we jump from one language to another, it's a bit of a shock. We take a few moments like, ah, uh, mm, well, ah, uh, mm, and we can avoid that if you are already thinking in English, if you are ready to hear English when you walk into the exam. So make your exam day an English day. Do everything that you can in English so that when you walk into the exam room, you don't get such a shock by changing the language. Okay? Now the moment of the exam has arrived. We're all feeling very, very nervous. We open the door, we walk through. What is the first thing you should do? <laughs> Say hello to your examiners. Believe it or not, examiners are people, okay? <laughs> they are not evil monsters out to destroy you. Okay? Say hello to them and smile and they will say hello to you and smile back and you will automatically feel more calm. Okay? Say hello to your examiners. Now you don't get a lot of time to think about what you're going to say. So make sure you make the most of it. Alright? If you finish reading through the topic and there's still time to spare, don't say, oh, Let's just get started. I want to finish as quickly as possible. If you still have time, read the topic again. Think about the structure of what you are going to say. Or think about what anecdotes you could use for this topic. Make the most of that time because you're not getting any more time later on. Okay? And of course, you use this time to ask about anything you're unsure of. <coughs> Even if it's just something small, remember that if you misunderstand the topic, you could answer the question incorrectly. So if there is one thing that you are not sure about in your topic, ask the examiners. Okay? They will be more than happy to explain it to you. Okay? Next piece of advice, pace yourselves. Alright, I know you will have done a lot of study. You will have a lot of information, a lot of words, a lot of structures inside you. But do not feel like you need to let it all out at the same time. If you speak too quickly, your examiners will not understand you. Okay? And then it won't matter what you say, because you won't get a mark for content, because they won't have understood anything. Make sure you enunciate, make sure you spread out what you are saying so that you are understood, okay? It's very important to speak clearly, all right? When you are doing your monologues, sometimes it's helpful to think of them as essays. So you begin with an introduction, you tell the examiner what you're going to talk about, then you talk about the body, of the information. This is where you put in your examples, your anecdotes, your facts, and then finally you give a conclusion. Alright? If you organize it like this in your mind, it's easier for it to come out later on. Okay? Another good idea is to go from general to specific, which means first talk about the topic in general and then get to your examples. If you start with your examples straight away, you may, see, you may find that you run out of things to say, okay? First explain the topic generally and then get to the more specific examples. And that way you will fill up your time. Yes? You can speak, you know, that is allowed. Okay? Second last piece of advice, do not be distracted by the marking, okay? You will have more than one examiner in front of you. For those of you in basic, you have two, and for the high levels, you have three. Two, one or two of those examiners will be writing. That is their job. They need to write down the good things and the bad things that they are doing. 
Do not feel stressed by the fact that they are writing all the time. It doesn't mean that you are always making mistakes. Okay? You need to try and ignore the fact that they are writing and just continue on with your topic. Okay? And finally, you are allowed to correct yourselves. Okay? If you realize you've made a mistake, you've said the wrong word, the sentence is in the wrong order, you're allowed to go back, say it correctly, and then continue on. In fact, examiners encourage it. Alright? So if you realize you've made a mistake, correct yourself, and then move on. Another thing examiners look for is your intonation. And the intonation is the musicality of your voice, your pitch, your tone. When you speak, do you go up or do you go down? Okay? Now, there are a couple of grammatical rules to intonation. For example, if with your WH questions, you normally go downwards. So, where are you going? Where are you going? Again, where are you going? Where are you going? And when you ask yes or no questions, our intonation goes up. So, are you coming to dinner? Are you coming to dinner? Are you going to pass your exams? Are you going to pass your exams? Okay, now those, that intonation is decided by grammar, but mostly intonation is decided by the attitude of the speaker. Alright, your, your intonation tells the people you are listening to if you are angry, if you are sad, if you are frightened. Alright, intonation carries a lot of meaning. And the problem is, when we're in our exams, sometimes we get so nervous that we're just still speaking at the same tone and it sounds like we're really, really bored. Okay? You need to make sure that your nervousness and your stress doesn't mean you don't have intonation in your speaking. Because intonation is very, very important when it comes to conveying meaning. And to demonstrate that, I'd like to ask for a volunteer to come up here, please. You all recognize this, yes? This is another area that the examiners will be looking at, your correctness. Do you use your vocabulary correctly and do you use your grammar correctly? And I thought the best way to have a good look at this is to go through some of the most typical mistakes. Now if you're at a basic level and you make some of these mistakes, it is understandable. But if you're intermediate or if you're advanced and you make a basic mistake, the penalization will be greater because these are things that you should no longer be doing. Okay? First of all, people is. Now, I firmly believe that if somebody says people is in an exam, they should be shot. <laughs> okay? No people is, no people likes, no people does. People is plural. Second of all, I am agreed. How do we say this correctly? I agree. I agree. Very good. Next we have the false friends. Be careful with those false friends. Make sure that when you use this and that and these and those, they match up with the thing you were describing. Okay? Is it singular? Is it plural? Is it here? Is it there? Make sure it makes sense. Next of all, be careful when you're telling people about age. Age can only be said using the verb to be. Okay? Next of all, your makes and your do's. I realize that in Spanish it's the same word, but in English, if you use the one that is incorrect, it is very obvious. It sounds wrong to us. Okay? So all we have to do is memorize that list of make and do. Please be very, very careful with gender. Do not make your mother a man in the middle of the exam. Okay? <laughs> Remember to decide on a gender and stick to it, okay? And finally, barring some very special structures such as the imperative and some clauses that you learn at a more advanced level, all of the clauses in English have subjects, okay? You have to use subjects in your sentences, otherwise it just doesn't make sense, all right? So be very, very careful with that mistake. To the end of the presentation, guys. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Remember to stay on topic when you are in your exams, okay? 
Also remember that if you don't remember a word, it's not the end of the world. You just need to explain it in a different way. If you get stuck, if you draw a blank, there's no need to panic. Examiners know that you are nervous. Okay, so just take a deep breath and continue on. All right, and finally, make sure you use all the grammar and all the vocabulary I know you are studying now. Okay, you want to show off what you know and that is going to get you the pass. All right. Thank you very much for your attention and best of luck with your exams. Thank you.